Welcome everyone to The Prayer Link. I'm Wendy Griffith. And I'm Charlene Aaron. And we are at Christmas and I can't believe that Christmas is here. It always kind sneaks of, up on me. I know, we every have year. all year to get ready for it. And then it's like, oh my gosh, it's Christmas like it's in five days. Here. So what's your plans uh, for Christmas? How do you plan to spend it? I am going to almost heaven, West Virginia. Almost my, heaven. Uh, right. <laughs> my parents still live in West Virginia and I'm taking my fiance for the first time. He's going to see oh. where I said, you've got to see where I came from before we tie the knot. You need to know. Yes. You need to he know. He needs to know. So, um, <laughs> And my family loves him. So Aww. he's going to get to have a West Virginia Christmas. I love it. I love it. And me and my family, you know, I have two grandchildren now. Yes. They're so and, adorable. But it's so hard because I have to split them between, you know, spending time with us for Christmas and spending time with the other grandparents. Right, so right. I'm greedy. I want to have them together with me all the okay, time. Just invite everybody over to your house. Well, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that works out. See how that works. <laughs> They're right. sweet people. They're sweet hey, people. look at her little emojis. Isn't that adorable? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Praise well, God. Christmas is the most beautiful time of the year. We all enjoy the sparkle, the lights, the food, and the fun. And if you still need to trim the tree and deck the halls, here's a look at just how easy it can be to decorate on a dime. Check out this edition of Home with Heather. Hey friends, welcome to my house. Here we like to create, inspire, and just be ourselves. And just like the song says, it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's a great time for friends and family to get together to celebrate Christmas. And speaking of family, I have a very special family member here today joining me. My most favorite is mom, AKA Mimi. <laughs> Say hi, Mom. Hi, everybody. <laughs> we don't live close, but when we get together, we love to have a good time. And we don't even look the same, but we sure are wired the same. We both are always looking for a good deal and to save money. So today, we want to share with you some really fun Christmas DIYs that won't break the bank and that cost less than a peppermint white chocolate mocha, and it's quicker than the drive through to pick it up. So we're going to start here with this super warm and cozy wreath. First, you're going to take a pool noodle. That is what you're going to need first. Then you're going to need a scarf, some ribbon that you probably have laying around. Then you're going to want to head to your teenager's room for the duct tape, push pins, and some greenery that you can even clip off your own Christmas tree to um, uh, put on your wreath. So this is what we're going to do. You're going to take your noodle, put it together. Then you're going to take your pieces of duct tape and you're simply going to attach the noodle like this. And then you're gonna kinda, you're gonna add a couple more, but you're gonna bend it into place. And then you're gonna take your scarf. And if you don't have a scarf in your closet, you can pick them up at the treasure store, AKA thrift store. And you're just gonna keep rolling it and rolling it and rolling it. You get the idea until the whole thing is completely covered. And then you want to add your embellishments like I have here with just some ribbon and my pine, which is real, and it's just a great little touch. Next, we're going to look at something with a sweater. So you want to go back to your closet again and pull out a sweater that you have tucked away. And if you don't want to part with any, you want to go to the treasure store again. And with an old sweater, you can use lots of ideas with this, but today we only have time for two. And this involves this ornament. Isn't this adorable? Oh, I love this. This is either a great gift idea or you can make several of these for your own tree. And all you really need is a sweater and an embroidery hoop and I got these I got two for three dollars with my coupon and it is so cute wait till you see how you make these you're just gonna lay it flat on your sweater you're gonna put your hoop down and then I have one already cut here you're gonna cut around your embroidery hoop slide this down like this so you can see you're gonna put it on there like that and then just simply put it around as you can see we're forming our ornament and then you're going to just cut around and voila, here we go. And this is also a time where you can add really cute embellishments like pine or berries or ribbon. And that will just make everyone smile if you get that for a gift. Now that is clever. Isn't that so cute? Yes, that's Now cute. we're going to keep working with our sweater. And this is going to be the best idea that you have seen all year. And we call these vase koozies. I have some set up here. These are all just vases that I had around my house. So shop around your house. Find some cute vases. Some of 
these were just a dollar. Some of these are old jars that I found from the thrift store. And we are going to spruce them up a little. And how you do this, it literally takes seconds. And you're going to be cozying everything in sight. All you need is the sleeve of your sweater. And you're going to measure with your jar. I have a jar here that we're doing. And you're just going to put it over there and see really where you need to cut it. And then, can you see, Mom, you doing yeah. this here? Um, you're going to cut it right off. And you saw that was like three seconds. And we're going to put it over and voila. Oh, I'm still in that idea. Isn't that the cutest? That is so clever. So now we need something fun to put in these jars. And that is our last but greatest, something salt and sweet to spice things up. And that's Mimi's famous M&M pretzels. I've been known to make these pretzels, probably thousands of these pretzels <laughs> over the years. All you do is get a, a baking sheet, line them with your pretzels. You can actually find pretzels this time of year that are shaped like stars, Ooh, bells, trees. trees. Put them on your baking sheet, then go to your candy store, get a little candy disc, mm -hmm. put them in the center of every uh, pretzel, put them in the oven, 350 for two minutes, bring them out, and then put your little M&M right in the center. And you can uh, see here, they're all ready to go. Then you can put them in a cute little jar and give them as little gifts. Great gift ideas, especially for teachers. And this will earn you a double A plus for affordability and adorableness. And remember, the greatest gift that you will receive this Christmas isn't found under the tree, but it was found in the remainder. So Merry Christmas from our house to yours. And remember, a home is a place where you express yourself. So you be you and we'll be us. And we'll see you next time at Home with Heather. And for more at Home with Heather, you can visit cbnnews.com. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I was behind the wheel of a car and it's about to end it all. When you go through abuse, it's like something um, handicaps you in that moment. My life has been, you know, one direction, up, down, sideways. I've just been just like the trajectory of a knuckleball. God wants to love you where you are, wherever that is, in your brokenness. Like he wants to be there with you in that moment. God is in control of my life and I'm thankful for it. Adrienne Young is known as the thrifting queen. She has even written a book about it called Don't Go Thrifting Without Me, a mini guide to maximize the benefits of thrifting. Adrienne joins us now from South Carolina to share more about the idea of thrifting for the holidays. Welcome, Adrienne. Thank you, Charlene. Glad to be here. First of all, when did you first get into this whole idea of thrifting? It first started happening in high school and then as I merged and I got married and started having children, I remember entering back into my school counseling career and watching the amazing show, What Not to Wear, with Stacey London. And I remember making a list of everything I would need and not wanting to pay $100 for a pair of slacks and shoes. And my in-laws at that time blessed me. It was around Christmas. They blessed me with $100. And I went to Goodwill that day, that next day when it opened, and I got everything I needed in my wardrobe and had change left over. From oh, wow. that point on, I was hooked. I love it. I love the fact of having change left over. You say that there is a process when it comes to thrifting. What are some of the inside secrets of the trade? I'm so excited to share this with you all. One of the things it is so important that you remember is why are you going in this store? I know some people go just to go, but for me, there is a whole process. For instance, let's say you are looking particular for black slacks. It's important that you just go exactly where that area is, find the black slacks and look through them. Now, if you have time left over, absolutely peruse the other areas, but stay focused on what your needs are and have a list and a budget and that helps you and when you're trying on clothes, I always say, make sure you have on your thrifting uniform. I talk about this a lot in the book um, because there are some instances where you don't have time to try it on right in the dressing rooms. They may be full. Some thrift stores may not have a dressing room. So you dress appropriately. Um, for instance, I wear maybe leggings and a fitted tee with a duster so I can just try them on really quickly and get in and out if I don't have a lot of time. Well, it is Christmas time. We're just days away from Christmas. Talk about thrifting for the holidays. I love this idea. What kind of deals are out there right now? 
right now you can get Christmas decor. For instance, I thrifted a Christmas tree, a six foot pre-lit Christmas tree for 30 bucks. Um, you can get your holiday ornaments. You can also get little trinkets and things to set around your home, but you can also thrift for gifts. You would not believe how many items are out there, such as toys. You can get um, handbags, shoes, sometimes brand new, and bless the people in your circle around the holidays. Your newly released book, Don't Go Thrifting Without Me, what motivated you to write it? It was totally a God thing. I started this book in 2014. I had a thrift, Don't Go Thrifting Without Me community with over 2,000 men and women. And when God told, called me into full-time ministry, he told me to give that community away. So I walked away and I pursued full-time ministry. And I still thrifted along, but I was not as involved in the group. And then I read a prophetic word by Lana Bowser about how God was um, rising up scribes and writers in this season and fire would hit your fingers. I had an amazing friend who had a prayer group. And she, on that night, did a prayer for writers, pulling out some of those things from Lana's book and her prophetic thing. And literally, fire hit my fingers. So the Holy Spirit led me to go upstairs and grab my laptop. And I thought, okay, I'm going to start working on Women Who Wore, which is a book I'm writing for a conference coming up. And he said, no, go pick up Don't Go Through Them Without Me. And that was around 10 o'clock that night. I started writing. And in two hours, I had completely finished the book. I emailed my editor. And she said, let's get that one out. Adrian Young, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. The book is called Don't Go Thrifting Without Me, and it is sold wherever books are found. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. I was Muslim for four years. I had spells cast on me and just everything you can think of. I never got what I was looking for. There was no real power to change my life. I had tried everything. I was just came to a point where it was like, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. The little old lady at the church, she'd come and get me. She prayed for me. And all I know is I felt the love of God. We would read from Genesis to Revelation, and we just went deep in the Word of God. Everything about me, even my very continents, began to change after that point. And now I just have a desire to see them experience the loving kindness of God that I have experienced, to see that true change is possible and that what you thought that you were looking for can only be found in Christ. From tree decorating to holiday baking, Christmas is filled with so many traditions. And one of my favorites is making Christmas cookies and cakes. And that's why I employ the help of Chef Tasha Davis. And many say that her food is seasoned with love. She's the owner and operator of Be Creative, Be Delicious Catering. And she joined me in the CBN Test Kitchen earlier to whip up a unique holiday treat. Welcome to Prayer Link, Chef Tasha. Thank you, Charlene. How are you today? I am great. We all love the holidays yes. and we love cooking, especially if you're a chef. Oh, yeah. What are some of your favorite holiday treats that you like to cook up? Well, a cake that has to be on our table is my toasted coconut pineapple cake. Ooh. It's warm, delicious, and it's awesome. It sounds amazing. It is. And you have another cake that you really like to yes, do too. Yes, and it's my banana pudding cake. We're gonna make that today. Yes. Tell us what's in it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with two cups of sugar. All right. And you just pour it in a mixer. And then we're gonna have one cup of softened butter. You can leave it out at room temperature. And it's important so it's just, for it to be room temperature. Absolutely, because it affects the baking process if you have cold butter. Okay. And that's just two sticks of butter okay. for you out there in TV land. Okay. And then you have one cup of my secret ingredient, which is pretty much banana pudding mix. It's no longer secret now. It's okay. no longer the secret. The word is out. So what you do is you want to blend it. And then you want it to combine until it's like nice and fluffy. Okay. So what we have here is four eggs at room temperature. Okay. And what you want to do is you want to incorporate them one at a time. So we're going to put our first egg in. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. So not make sure not to dump all four of them there right, at one time. Right, because it'll break the, um, the butter and the um, sugar. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to turn off your mixer and you want to scrape the sides because that's where all the goodness is. So after all of that, then what you want to do is you want to take your two and a half teaspoons of 
baking powder into two and three fourths cup of sifted all purpose flour. Okay. And then what we want to do is we have one tablespoon of pure vanilla. So I like to incorporate that into my milk. And what you want to do is you want to is wet and dry. So you always want to start with your flour and end with your flour. Okay. Start with the flour and end with the flour. Right. Why is that important? It's important because if you end with the wet, then you're going to have a real loose batter and you don't want to do that. Wow. Never thought of that before. Yep. And it's so it's just combined. You don't want to overbeat it because then you'll have a dry cake. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to turn it down because you don't want to overbeat it, like I and said. How much banana is this? And this how is a half it? a cup, I'm sorry, of banana puree. Yes. So what it is is just one banana, depending on the size. It's usually one, one banana should be fine. And you'll smash it up. And then you add it last because it adds moisture and you don't want to um, overbeat it. Okay. And Chef Tasha, you, you say that baking with love is so important. Why is that? It is because you can tell the difference. Have you ever ate food from somewhere and you like, they just didn't care? Yeah. You, you, can, you can taste it and people know the difference when you cook with love versus when you cook just to be cooking. So I love everything that I do. <laughs> so I make sure that when I cook that people can feel it in every dish that I make. That's awesome. Awesome. So and we're going to pour this into the oh pans yeah. now. Wow. So you want to make sure like you get to the bottom of that. And I have two spray pans. You could just use your favorite nonstick spray or some people like to use the um, shortening and um, flour. Okay. So you'll just do the shortening and then dust it with flour. Wonderful. And then what you're going to do is you're going to bake it at 350 degrees in a preheated oven. Okay. For about 30 minutes, depending on your oven, it may be 25. Okay. And... By the magic of television, we have two here that have already been baked. Ta-da! They, they're nice and cool. Mm -hmm. And you're going to show us how you actually begin to decorate this beauty. Right. So what I have here is just um, banana pudding. You just follow the directions on the box, or you can make it from scratch. Um, and I use one package of cream cheese Ooh. at room temperature. Cream so cheese you wanna, and banana. Yes. You want to smooth the, um, blend the um, cream cheese until it's nice and smooth, okay. and then you incorporate it into the pudding. Oh, right. So you get a nice consistency. I like to put it in the fridge for a minute, so that way it's nice and thick, because you don't okay. want to loose pudding up there. Oh, wow. So this is how I layer it. I am so ready to try this. It's oh, so yeah. So after you get that smooth out. What you want to do is you want to grab your bananas because it's a banana pudding cake. You have a banana that's cut up. Oh, yeah. I have okay. one banana, but I usually put like one and a half, you know, depending on how much you like bananas. On each layer. Right, on okay. each layer. And then you repeat the process. Wonderful. So you'll take this and you always want to have your bottom facing up. Then you put it awesome. up there and repeat. Awesome. And, and voila. We have one that's already finished. Oh, and have fun with wow. it. You can decorate it any type of way this that you gorgeous. like. This is gorgeous. Thank you so much. I can't wait to taste a piece. You want to try? I most certainly do want to try. Right. <laughs> wow. Very easy. It's not a very difficult recipe. No, nah, it's not. It just looks like it took a whole lot of time. And that's what you want. You want people to um, like feel like you took. With love. Yes. Oh, wow. All right. Oh, MG, y'all. Look at that. Oh, that's a that's gigantic. Oh. Wow, that's, here we go. <laughs> it's Christmas in my mouth. Mmm. Delicious. Thank you so much. Absolutely scrumptious. Mm. Thank you. And you want to keep it in the fridge because it has fresh bananas in it. You don't want them to get brown on you. Absolutely scrumptious. Wendy, oh my gosh. Was it good? That was so much fun. It was delicious. Oh my God. I love and anything with banana. And we also baked and decorated some gingerbread cookies. Aww. It was are delicious. We gonna see, are we going to see that? No, unfortunately. Oh, did we you We ran out of time, but they, <laughs> I had one. <laughs> nice. Thank you so much. Well, to learn how to make your gingerbread cookies a holiday hit, you can visit CBN.com. Stay tuned. Come home to the sounds of Southern Gospel from CBN Radio.
you'll enjoy a rich Southern blend of bluegrass, classic gospel and Southern gospel favorites like the Gaithers, the Crab Family, and bluegrass sounds like Mountain Faith. So make yourself at home with the all new CBN Southern Gospel. Now available at cbnradio.com. And welcome back to the Prayer Link. We are joined now by a fabulous guest, Jody Burnt. She is the author of a series of books on praying for your children. Welcome to the Prayer Link. Thank, Thank you so much, Wendy. Treat to be here. Well, of course, it's Christmas time and we're talking about gift giving. And you're going to tell us something interesting about giving the gift of prayer yes. to your children. And well, whatever made you decide to do this? Well, we um, have four children. We had four kids in six years. And just like a lot of parents, I think, you scramble to find yeah. that perfect gift. Sure. And we have had some doozies. One year, our daughter wanted a my size Barbie. And she was probably about three and a half feet tall. Our daughter was, and so was Barbie. And she begged and begged and begged. And we thought, no, it's too expensive. It's too crazy. It's too, but you know, we finally caved. And I think two days before Christmas, we went to three different stores, found it. And I still consider that one of our gift, biggest gift giving fails because Christmas morning, our daughter tore off all the wrapping, was so happy, then tore off Barbie's clothes, put them on her. And that was that. And I thought, okay, there's got to be a better way. And I'm never going to be one of these parents that says, don't get into the gifts. I, I think that's an important thing to honor Christ's birthday is, but I, I thought there's got to be something else. And I remembered my grandmother who never gave us anything. She would say, I want you to memorize a Bible verse for me. And in return, I will pray for you. And I thought, well, that didn't really appeal. Like as a teenager, sure. I would have rather had, you know, present. But now that I'm grown, I think all of her prayers have wow. worked so much more in my life than any of, you know, a gift she could have given me. And the Bible verses that she asked us to memorize one a year yeah. taught us more about things like wisdom and compassion and kindness than anything else. And so that's what you've been doing now for, for several years yes. is every well, Christmas you've every been giving, Christmas. You've yes. been giving your, your children, all four of them, two are grown, uh, married now and two are in college. Yes. And, uh, no, I know. No, well, two are married, one's out of college and one's still in college. But yes, ever since they were young, I would spend a little bit of time in December and I would think about where they were, you know, socially, intellectually, spiritually, spiritually emotionally, and kind of what, what maybe their needs were, what God might want to do in their life. And I love to pray scripturally, to use God's words in the Bible to sort of shape and animate my desires and my prayers. And so I would pick one particular mm -hmm. verse and I would let that be kind of the gift for that year. Yeah. And you know, at first I think they thought it was kind of silly, but now that we've done this for 15, 20 years, yeah. they really actually get excited after all the other gifts are open to be able mm -hmm. to see what God might want to give them that year through the parents' prayers. And wow. it's just so been a neat tradition. It sort of has a, a prophetic edge on it because you've, you've, you've prayed, you've asked God, what is the scripture for them and thought right. about their lives. Right. And you have an example. Of, yeah, of, of I, you know, we have like, well, when they were little, I used to take their hands <laughs> and I would put, you know, trace them on colored paper and I'd write the prayer verse right on there and date it. Now they're big and it would look creepy to trace their hands. So I do it on little <laughs> index cards and keep them in my journal. But this is from 2001 and our son, Robbie, at the time, he's our youngest. Um, he's an athlete, which sounds like a great thing. But when he was probably in kindergarten, we discovered that he could hit anything, whether it was a ball or like a classmate with equal dexterity. And so, you know, you're kind of going, okay, no hitting your siblings, no hitting your classmates. Um, he really lacked self-control. He had some anger issues. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure there's somebody out there that has a child like that. I hope there is. I don't know. I was kind of at the end of my rope. And that was the year that I picked Proverbs 23, 23 and 24. And I said, Heavenly Father, help Robbie get wisdom, discipline, and understanding. Let him be the righteous man who brings his parents great joy, the wise son in whom we delight. How did he react when you gave that to him? Well, you know, he was pretty young and he just thought, okay, trace my hand, you know, that kind of thing. But I will say, as the year went on, I was discouraged at first because I didn't see the needle moving. And don't we know that, that God doesn't just say, oh, you prayed this, answer. Um, and I would go to the parent-teacher conferences and I would just want to cry because, you know. Yeah. Um, and so I went to one more conference and the teacher, I could see, I could see looking at the form that she had a zero by um, behavior. And I thought, oh, here we oh, go again. No. And I wanted to cry. And she said, you know, I don't know what you're doing at home, but Robbie has really become a bright spot in our class. Really? And I thought, even though he got the zero, that's what I thought. And she yeah. said, oh, no, no, it's not a zero. She flipped it around. She said, that's an O for outstanding. Wow. Yeah, you know, and that 
was the kind of thing, as I say, it didn't happen overnight. Wow. It was months of this prayer. And I would even say it's been years as he's grown, as I've continued to pray. He's 23 now. And I will say, if you look at him, that anger and that lack of self-control have really been replaced with wisdom and discipline. And I mean, he's not perfect, no child is, but it's God and it's his word. That is so encouraging. Yeah. And of course, you can do that, not just at Christmas time, but any year. But Anytime. I, I did Anytime. this one year, years ago, and it's such a great reminder because it, it's a gift that keeps giving, like you said. Absolutely, you know? it's one of these things, you know, talk about my size Barbie. Um, this is something that doesn't go out of style, doesn't cost anything. Um, it's from the heart. It's from the heart, it's available to all of us. Yeah. You know, so I just think it's a great gift to, um, to give to somebody, your children, your spouse, your friends. It's amazing. Well, you have written not one book, but three books, Praying the Scriptures for Your Children, Praying the Scriptures for Your Teens, right. and Praying the Scriptures also for Your Adult Children. Yes. And they have different needs because now you, the two of them are married. And so that must be kind of a, a different role yeah, for you they, now. They have different needs, but I will say that I don't think there's a need we face in parenting or in any of life that God has not already thought of and provided for in his word. Yeah. You know, if it's compassion you need, he's got verses, he's got promises for that. If it's physical health and safety and protection, we know promises for that. And the books are arranged so that at the back of every chapter, you find the topic you need and you can read the stories and the principles, but then you can flip to the back and get the Bible verses to pray. And I think that's really where the power is. Well, Jody, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there saying, I want to do this. Uh, this is a great yeah. gift. If they need help, maybe, uh, figuring out what scripture to yeah. pick or just yeah. strategizing. Well, I, I say there aren't any bad ones. You know, people say, what if I pick the wrong one? I'm like, no, so they're, where, they're where all they good. go or if they want to get your books? Well, um, my website, jodyburnt.com, has a lot of free resources. There are 31 day prayer calendars people can download and, and pick, you know, you can pray day by day or you can just say, oh, my child's struggling with anxiety and pick the verse that deals with that. Um, and is, there are lots of resources and, and on there. The books are there. For folks to know, Jody Burnt, it sounds like sunburnt, but it's B-E-R. NDT. So again, your yes. website, Jody Burnt. Jody Burnt, J O D I E B E R N D T dot com. Yeah, I love to have visitors. Such a great idea, and we Thank so appreciate you. you being here. Merry Christmas Aww, to Merry you. Merry Christmas to you. Lord bless. <laughs> and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Come home to the Southern Gospel Station from CBN Radio. You'll enjoy a rich Southern blend of bluegrass, classic gospel, and Southern Gospel favorites. CBN Southern Gospel. Available now at CBNRadio.com. Well, guys, here is a beautiful Christmas miracle. A little girl in Texas had an inoperable brain tumor, but now it's gone. 11-year-old wow. Roxley Doss underwent weeks of radiation for her cancer. Mm. In June, doctors gave her little hope of survival, so her family prayed for a miracle. And God answered, little Roxley is now cancer-free and is back to doing what she loves, riding horses. Her doctors have no explanation, for why the tumor disappeared, but we know it was God. It was truly a Christmas miracle. <laughs> I love it. God is the God Thank of you, miracles. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of the Prayer Link. And don't forget to share your prayer requests and testimonies with us. Email us at prayerlink at cbn.org. Until next time, God bless you. And remember, prayer works. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs>